Hello there, this is Mike Goldenberg with some Thalia Stompy, which is Spider Space's deck. Uh, here is an easy mulligan. Uh, I guess I have... I think I have to keep this. I do have Leon and Arbiter with Ghost Quarter. I also have Chalice. I'll keep this and I'll bottom... Hey Fox Mitten, how's it going? I'll bottom a dune. Hallowed Fountain Pass. I was really hoping for a Simeon Spirit Guide there. I had Chalice on one to get under counter magic be pretty sweet right there. He made it, Fox Mitten. Uh Do they have counter magic? Because if they don't, I can Simeon Spirit Guide, Leon and Arbiter, drop Ghost Quarter, blow up a land. Well, enjoy your dinner. I assume you saw the episode of Game of Thrones last night. My my day's going pretty well. Okay, Chalice, Chalice resolves. I drop Chalice there instead of Arbiter because I want to drop uh, the Chalice on one before the Arbiter so that way any path exiles and fatal pushes they might have um, can't destroy Arbiter, which will make my Ghost Quarter stronger and can let me kind of take over the game from there. Well, last, last night's episode is no spoilers, but uh, last night's episode was a pretty big deal in terms of uh, plot mechanics. Alright, what does new Teferi do? I can't cast instants. Okay, I can't cast spells in their turn. Fine. Until their next turn, they can cast sorcery spells though they had flash. I don't care about that. And they can return an artifact, creature, or enchantment to their hand. They can unsummon something. Draw a card. Okay. So, they can bounce my chalice to the void. I don't like that. <laughs> well, it was, it was a very dark episode because it happened at night. At night, under a storm. Okay, so Teferi minus three. I have Cavern, which I can replay him. I don't know what I want to do here. I can also display a Restoration Angel. Um, but I think I want to save Simeon Spirit Guide for Smasher. And I also want it means I also want to save Cavern for Smasher. So I'll just drop Arbiter here. That's fine. If I need to, I can not cast Warping Whale, so never mind. I don't love Mainboard Deferi. That just seems odd to me. So I'm casting this to get the Scion in play, so then I can use 
cavern correctly. Like if I used cavern right there, they could still counter my thought knot. So I'd have to use cavern for the colorless aspect. Which going back, I think that was a mistake. I should have kept, uh, should have shuffled the planes and kept the chef at Dune on top for that very reason. So I can drop a Smasher or a Thought Knot here. Uh, because Teferi can just unsummon something, I think... Let's see, if I drop a Smasher, I can smash in and actually kill Teferi. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Smasher here. What seems extremely narrow, Fox Mitten? I'm taking on Teferi. I don't actually care about him, but for the most part, I just actually care that his minus three is an unsummon. That's the part that I don't like. His other abilities don't really matter to me. I don't care about my opponent being able to cast things at instant speed. Yeah, I... main board it seems kind of terrible. I mean, it's doing work here because the I've had a really slow game so far, and the unsummon effect has been great. Like I would love like a, a gemstone caverns good here. Okay. I really just don't want them to like unsummon my creatures. It's really what I don't want to happen. Well, that's pretty, that's actually a neat little interaction there. Um, okay, I think snap's probably the, uh, I have to take a snap, I don't really care about the others. If they draw a land, they can go snap verdict, which would be a little rough. Okay. It really is a good card against control. Uh, what they're doing right now is a little rough, though. Mm, we got a planes. I don't need the waste because I have the gemstone cavern. So you can choose a mana leak. Okay. It's fine. Favorite tap out, I want to flash in this restoration angel. I feel like my opponent missed sequence there. I feel like they should have used snap for the Supreme Verdict. I feel like that was their line. Although one thing that's interesting about this Teferi is he's got no ultimate, so it's like he's just an uns if he gets high enough loyalty, he's just gonna be an unsummon every turn, which isn't even that great against Thought Knot decks. Hey Tluff. What are your concerns about um, Resto and Thought Knot? I mean ideally Restoration Angel is for Leonin Arbiter, 
Um, that's what I want it for. Sure. I have no idea what my opponent's doing at the moment. I guess they saved themselves three life and don't have to worry about Ghost Quarter now killing their threat. I don't know. They have a Logic Knot in hand, that's why I didn't uh, cast Thalia or Resto. I don't want to just lose them to a card I know about when I can just wait a little bit and try to go like Thalia into a Chalice or something. Seem like a weird little sequence for my opponent. Oh, I can't cast uh, right. The fairy stops um, resto. This Teferi is a weird, weird card. I don't think it's very good. Yeah, Thought Not Seer is really, really good with Displacer. Tilaf, are you still there? Or did you just hop in just to tell me you don't like the uh, the one of Restoration Angel? They can't logic not here because they didn't grab a basic island. Sure. Yeah, Eldrazi display. I have Eldrazi displays from this deck. The Restoration Angel is a one of, and it's honestly in there to collect, to protect Thalia and Leon and Arbiter from removal spells. It's not in here. Uh, I think I just gotta do this. And I'm not in a good spot here. My opponent's got way more cards in hand than me. I can't cast Simeon. I guess I could play one Simeon off of the other. Oh, I should have uh, simeon to pay the two. I don't think it matters. I'm really just waiting up for a smasher at the moment. Um, honestly, the Restoration Angel is in spot of Endbringer. That's the flex spot there. Endbringer or Restoration Angel. Yeah, I'll concede to that unless I draw exactly a smasher. They put a card on top, so it's not a smasher. Yeah. What do I want here? Sorcerer Spyglass seems pretty good. I think Karn is actually decent here. Um, Yeah, I like Restoration Angel a lot. 
What I should have done is I should have used some mean spirit guide to protect the restoration angel. That might have changed the matchup. I don't think it would have. I don't think I can beat uh, Jace from that spot. I was just way, way behind. So this hand's a mull. I think I keep this. I don't have anything great turn one, but I am on the play. And I will bottom. That cast out. Nail Spellbomb is pretty useless against me. Again, same reasoning behind dropping a Chalice on one over the Arbiter is the Arbiter might be able to cheese out a win if they have fetch lands in hand. Um, but this way... They can't cast Fatal Push or Path to Exile and or Dismember or something. Oh, actually, Dismember still gets through. But they can't ca can't use a one CMC card to kill my Leonard Arbiter here. So they have to have Mana Leak. Okay. Now if they tap out for anything, I'll Ghost Quarter a land and Stone Rain them. I can thought not see her. I think I'm going to start by attacking. Like I really want a thought not see her, but if I tap out, they're just going to pay Arbiter's tax and then get this fetch land and progress their own game plan. So I think what I actually want to do is just cast Thalia and hold up this Ghost Quarter, which landlocks them a little bit. And if I top deck a land next turn, I'm still able to progress my game plan. So if they pay Arbiter's tax... Yeah. Okay. Interesting to note, the Arbiter's Tax does not go on the stack. Now I get to go Thought Knot, and if they counter him, they won't have two mana up. To Ghost Quarter. Wow. Okay. So taking it to Fairy seems stupid. Let us have another one. I'll just take the Cryptic here and pass. This is just blue eye control with the time raveler and some extra sorceries to take advantage of them. Hmm.
It's fine, I'll just recast it on my turn. So, sequencing the Thalia there with the Arbiter really taxed him out of the game. I think I want the exact same 60. I don't know why they kept in Spellbomb against me, unless they, they have to have run Kaya, right? And they're trying to Kaya cheese me out of the game. Uh, so this has a turn 1 Chalice, or a turn 1 Thalia, or a turn 1 Arbiter. I just wish this hand had another land. I'll keep it. Put gemstone mine in play, and I will get rid of the extra arbiter. One thing to note: I don't have a way of casting dot not seer right now because gemstone caverns has to tap for colored mana right now. I think once again I'll just lead with the chalice here, which again protects my arbiter or Thalia. Okay, so I can go one, play my land, two, three, Simeon Spirit Guide, four, cast a Thought Knot. It seems a little excessive. What do you guys think? Do you think it was uh, Thalia or Leonin Arbiter was the correct play there? I think either was fine. Now they do have a two mana removal spell or dismember or something. I'd rather Arbiter get hit than a Thalia. Thalia? Okay. Uh, why? I'm not doubting you, I just would like to know the reason behind that. Just like right now, I can play a Thought Knot Seer into open mana, um, open counter spell mana, or I can just drop a Thalia in past turn. I am inclined to drop Thalia past turn and then uh, open up Thought Knot Seer next turn. Okay, I, I just think of both being a tax effect. Uh, Thalia taxes their spells, Arbiter taxes their mana. Them not being able to, them having to pay two mana to use every fetch in their deck kind of slows them down a little bit. At least it did last game. But that's that's fair. Thalia is, I think, gen Thalia is generally more powerful than Arbiter. In here right now, like I said, I can play a Thought Knot or a Thalia. I think I want to jam a Thought Knot. Well, this is before they get Cryptic Mana online here. Okay. So I was correct in waiting until he got cryptic mana on, and my turn my chalice to lead with was important. I have to take the Supreme Verdict because that just beats me. Um, yeah. So, you know, they, so they drew the land, but they can't fetch yet. And here I want to drop Thalia. Even though uh, Displacer, untapping with Displacer and Thought Not Seer is pretty much good game, um, I do want to drop Thalia here, because that can 
Once they, they'll pay the two, fetch, they'll have four mana up, which lets them cast Cryptic Command next turn, or even Teferi if they top deck on their land. Yeah, I think they should have, I think generally opponents should Esper Charm more often, although there in that spot, I think Esper Charming themselves to draw more lands, which they needed to get to their bombs, I think was actually the right line. So, let's cast Thalia, which can just tax them more in mana so they can't cast Cryptic next turn as easily. I'm still holding this Gemstone Cavern in play so I can uh, cheat out a little bit of extra mana on one turn only. This way here I'm also representing lethal. Yep, so they did not draw the extra land, so we ran away with it there. Okay, what am I playing next? Vote. This is a medley. We can play a wide variety of decks. I just chose Thalia Stompy to start, because it's a deck that I would love to play more of. What are the options? Um, well, I have Abzan Company. Ooh, let's, uh, we have Abzan Company, which is a deck I'm probably best known for. Um, we have the Chalice version of Abzan Company. We have uh, Traverse Shadow, but Abzan. We also have Traverse Shadow, not Abzan. I can build that. We have Abzan Traverse, Amulet Bloom, a bunch of different versions of Amulet Titan including the black version. We have Eldrazi Stompy. Green Black Rock, but I did just do stream that earlier today, so I'd rather not. Uh, Grixis Death Shadow. Uh, Green White Company, but this has got a bunch of Mirror Entity and Militia Buglers. And Bugler's really good in this list because you can grab everything except for Shalai in the entire deck. This is a pretty grindy version. It only runs two colors. Uh, my sweet, sweet brew here, Nightfall Karoo, which is a Nightfall list, but it runs the Secure Tribe Scout Karoo package, like Amulet Titan, which adds extra infinite options. So Retreat to Coral Helm, plus Secure Tribe Scout, plus Oboro, generates infinite landfall triggers. Those infinite landfall triggers can be used to gain infinite mana with Corsair Crufix, infinite clues with Tireless Tracker, and infinite mana with Lotus Cobra. If you also have an extra retreat out, it also generates infinite scry. Um, or you can just tap down their entire board and an infinite scry. You can do all of that. Um, if you have infinite mana and infinite clues, you can draw your entire deck. Then you can play your entire deck, gain infinite life. Now with Archangel of Thune with the infinite life, you can then have infinitely large sized creatures. You can bounce their entire, or tap their entire board down and then swing in for a cool combo win. That deck's a lot of fun. Um, we have Night Pod, which is an earlier variant of that deck. Malira Knight, old school. Naya Renegade Shift, which is a Valakut deck. Uh, Noble Abzan, which is a green black rock. A bunch of different versions of that. Some Sultai, green black Sultai. We have Sultai Fairies. We have Seed to the Rainbow, which is bad humans. I actually wouldn't even mind just getting a, like, a humans deck and playing that right now. I just have to get, pick up a couple pieces. Um, I was working on a bank company list. We have Temer Moon and Sultai Reclamation, which is a deck I cannot pilot uh, very optimally. This deck is really hard to play, so I need help on this one. So let me know. Lots of choices. Obviously, I can get different decks too. Um, I do have a Kaya, so we can try different Kaya brews. Yeah, Karoo Fall is a blast. Honestly, just talking about it makes me want to play it. I will say it's a pain in the butt to play on MTGO. <laughs> yeah, the deck the deck's a lot of fun. 